Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma bada habitafillah A question was asked And it's a question that's been asked before And that's why I didn't really give it uh, that much attention prior to this But I'll just quickly try to give some advice And it was from a brother who has recently been accepted to one of the Islamic universities and they're going to go and study very soon so what advice can we offer so this has been mentioned many times and I'm sure there's translated works of the scholar so I want to encourage people to res research these issues as well on uh, websites of Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'ah and so in general what I would say as brief as I can be is first and foremost Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thank him for a glorious opportunity to be invited to seek knowledge. Because the Prophet sallallahu said, Man bi Whenever Allah wants good for a person, he gives him understanding of the religion. So the fact that you have an opportunity to go and get fiqh fi deen bi idnillah ta'ala, that this is an invite from your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is... Uh, so it's a glorious opportunity. It's a ni'mah, min ni'amillah. It's a, a favor that Allah has given you over much of His creation. So, first and foremost, I would thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I would pray rakatain. Make wudu and pray rakatain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and make istaghfar kathir. And, you know, seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, much. And then, as a second piece of advice, in preparing yourself is for one that you will be going to the laws of the land and since you're coming to Saudi Arabia then uh, that you know and understand something about the culture and the law of the land and obviously you're not going to come here and and cause problems or get into fitna bi uh, ta'ala a third piece of advice I would say because since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has blessed you with this na'mah, is to remember this, always remember this. The Salaf used to say, Talib al-ilm, Talib al-jannah. Seeking knowledge is seeking paradise. So if you keep that in front of you, every time you get into a fitna, every time you get into a problem, every time you get frustrated, every time, if you're faced with poverty, if you're faced with whatever, but remember that you're seeking jannah. And that this path that you're upon is a steep path. It's a steep path to Jannah. And to affirm that even more is what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. مَنْ سَلَكَ تَرِيكًا يَلْتَلْمِسُهُ بِهِ عِلْمٍ سَخَّلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ تَرِيكًا الْجَنَّةِ Whoever traverses the path of, of uh, knowledge, Allah will make easy for him the path of Jannah. So that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with this invite in, in essence and has given you a path to come closer to him and to enter paradise and to learn your religion and to give and share that with others. That means Allah is making it easier for you to go to paradise. So that, that is a great honor from your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and all of creation supplicates for you and we will start by supplicating for you but even the fish in the sea so this is you know this is uh, uh, knowledge of the unseen we don't know we only know from the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he said all the creation makes uh, dua for the Talib al -ilm. so that shows that you're on an honorable path so how can you gain the biggest benefit from that path for one, being serious. Number two, ikhlas, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that it is to remove the ignorance from yourself and benefit. Number three, stay away from sin and ma'asi. Stay away from sin and ma'asi. And this is a difficult thing for many people, and this destroys Talib al ilm Because you may even attain something of knowledge, but what's going to prevent you from attaining your potential is those sins. Sins will make you forget. If you're busy watching pornography, you're not going to be able to memorize hadith properly. You may memorize some, but you're going to be nuts, and it's going to eventually, the sins will overcome you uh, and, and can destroy you. And have you leave the religion, in fact. I know 
many students of knowledge. And I was just, my heart was just shattered from a, a close companion of mine who was in one of the places I was in prior and was a known student of knowledge. And I'm not sure if he's practicing Islam anymore. And I can think of one, two, three, right offhand. And another one that for sure apostated, that was a graduate from Jam Islamiyah. This is deep right there. And then another one that I can think of from Jam Islamiyah. I don't know if he graduated. I think he did. And he used to visit Sheikh Rabi often. And Sheikh Rabi was asked, uh, asked about him one day, many, many years ago to a group of brothers, because they related the story. And they said, Sheikh so-and-so, he doesn't even go by that name anymore. He, he left Islam. And he used to be very, and the Sheikh said, I feared that for him because this is the relation, this is the result of extremism. This is why we say to stay away from people like Abdullah uh, 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 Al Faisal Jamaiki and Abu Hamza Misri and Abu Qatada uh, Filistini and uh, Abu Muhammad uh, Makdasi and, and all these other Takfiri ideologues that are Khalis Takfiri, that are wicked in their evil, wicked, and sinful speech. Yes, evil, wicked, and sinful speech. I said it. And I'll say it in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because those guys call the people to the most evil of acts. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, they're the dogs of the hellfire. And people who follow their sunnah instead of the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, instead of the sabil al instead of the sabil al salaf they're on that same path. So what I would say to you is stay away from extremism. Stay away from extremists. Anybody who has some weird, strange issues. And if people are bringing up a lot of issues and controversy to you, you are now going to be in the land of the ulama. You don't need to go to those brothers who are your peers. I mean, you can ask somebody who has more knowledge than you something, just some toji hat, but now you can go sit in those circles once you get the Arabic. If you don't know Arabic, you, you need to start sitting, take some time, at least a couple of times a week, to go to a, at least one lecture outside of the jam the jam is going to make you study and it depends on your background as well but also do not leave after four years or six years of study and not sit with ulama do not and make sure so make sure you gain a tie with some scholars and there will be so many durus it's going to be sick and ridiculous it's going to be so much especially be if being in medina what can i say my heart is like, I wish, you know, I, I remember those days of just living in Medina. And you go to the left, you go to the right, after Asr, before, uh, after Dhuhr, you know, whenever, after Fajr, in the Haram, this place, this place, Durus, Durus, Durus. There's going to be so many opportunities, so you don't want to get distracted also from your studies because you're going there and you're there as a student in the Jamia. So you study in the Jamia and you try to get some of those other Durus because the ulama give you something you won't get in the Jamia. And, and I can tell you many stories about that, but we're not going to get into that. Taib. Fear Allah as much as you can. And probably the last thing is stay away from controversy. Don't get into a clique or a group. Really, just be your own man. Grow in your deen. And have husn al-suhbah. Have good, good companions. People who remind you to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People who remind you of Allah Azza wa Jal. People who remind you of the studies of dhikr. People who go with you and say, hey, let's go to a dars. Sheikh so-and-so. Sheikh Suleiman or Ahili has a dars. Oh, Sheikh uh, Imam Abdul Basin is, is teaching. Sheikh Salih Suhaimi. Um, Sheikh Ali Nasser Faqih has a dars. Oh, Sheikh, Abdul, uh, Sheikh uh, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab Aqil. Sheikh Abdullah Bukhari is doing this. Sheikh Ubaid is doing this. You know, whatever. Keep busy in khair. And have good husna suhbah, have good companions. And don't get caught up in the cliques because the groups, the brothers, they have cliques. They will try to snatch you as soon as you get there. They're going to call you to this one, this one. But instead, take the advice of those if you can get around any elder students or at least people who are going to tell you to be uh, following the book of Allah and the son of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not in name only, but they're calling you. If they're calling you, as soon as you get there, they're warning you about this one and this one. You know, you kind of just be a little bit uh, on guard. Because they could be warning you against true mubtadi'ah. But, at the same time, that's not what you need to be focusing yourself on. So I would also advise you, advise you go to the advice. I think Sheikh Tahir uh, Wyatt has mentioned some things about this uh, on the brother Sajid Lipman, his channel. 
uh, and, and there's a lot of interviews with uh, Tulab al M. so I would advise you to go there and listen to some of their experiences because those are the people who've done it. They are were graduates of the Jamia. I'm not. I didn't go to the Jamia Islamia. So they can tell you firsthand uh, the, the, the ins and outs of the dorm living and everything uh, about it. And he has a, a many interviews on there. So I would definitely advise you to listen. Wassalamu alaikum wa sallam ala Muhammad.